Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. In this video, we're going to talk about solving inequalities. This really ties in with the last video where we talked about solving multi-step equations. The same rules still apply to solving inequalities with one exception. We're going to talk about that specific exception. In order to solve inequalities, we need to first off know the inequality symbols. This one is less than, and I tell students it looks kind of like a slanted L. So you can see L, L, that's your less than. Greater than, and then you've got your less than with a line underneath it. That means less than or equal to. So it could be less than or it could be equal to. Uh, same thing with greater. When you have that line under it, it makes it greater than or equal to. So you've got to have these down before you can really dive in with solving inequalities. So in these examples, we're going to look through four different examples. We're going to solve the inequalities, and then we're going to graph the inequalities. The same basic rules for solving equations apply here. We treat this inequality like an equal sign. So I can move back and forth around it. I just treat it as if it were an equal sign. So. Um, same rules still apply, so looking at step one, thinking about the last video, step one was use distributive property to get rid of any parentheses. So I see I've got some parentheses here I need to get rid of. So I'm going to bring down my 4x minus 8 is less than 2 times x is 2x, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Now, I want to get all my variables to the left and my constants to the right. It's really important here that we get the variables to the left because there's a trick I'm going to show you when it comes to graphing, but it only works if we get the variable to the left. Otherwise, it can get a little complicated. So, I want to go ahead and move. This is a positive 2, so I want to subtract this and move it over. So I'm going to combine these like terms, 4x minus 2x gives me 2x. I'm going to bring down my minus 8, less than symbol, negative 2. So now I want to get my constants all on the right. So I've got to move this 8, and in my last video we talked about using inverse operations, which still applies here. So I'm going to bring down my 2x is less than negative 2 plus 8 would give me positive 6. And then my last step to get x alone, remember we want to isolate the x, so I want to divide by whatever's in front of it so that those cancel to 1. And I want to do the same thing here. So in this case, it's x is less than 6 divided by 2, which is... Three. Now that we've got our inequality solved, we can graph it. These are super easy to graph as long as you remember a couple rules. So I would have my center of my number line be 3. When you have a greater than or less than symbol, so either this one or this one, not the ones with the lines underneath, okay? But when you just have one of these first two, you're going to keep an open circle. Now here's the fun trick. This is really easy as long as your variable is on the left. Look at where your inequality is pointing. It's kind of like if I made this inequality an arrow, it's pointing this way. So I'm going to shade this way. So what this graph is representing is that this equation, really expression, is the solution is anything less than positive 3, but it doesn't actually include positive 3. That's why I leave that open circle. So whatever x is, it could be less than 3, but it couldn't actually be 3. So let's look at example number 2. Um, I've got negative 3x plus 6 is less than, you've got to be able to identify those signs, less than negative 3. So my goal is to get all my constants to the right and my variables to the left, and in this case my variable's already on the left. 
so we don't have to move those at all. But I need to get this 6 over. So I'm going to do the inverse operation of what's being done. This is a plus 6, so I'm going to minus 6. Those cancel out to 0. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So let's bring down what we have left. Negative 3x is less than negative 3 minus 6 would give me negative 9. Now I know my rules of, of solving tell me that I need to split these two up by dividing by negative 3. Right? Because I want to isolate my x to get it alone. Now, here's where our rule comes into play. Remember I said it was almost the exact same as if this was an equal sign, but a little different. And here's the rule. If you divide or multiply by a negative number, your sign flips. So you'll notice here I'm dividing across this sign by a negative 3. Because remember what I do to one side I have to do to the other. So because I'm taking a negative 3 across the sign, my sign flips. This works for less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, it doesn't matter, all of them. So if it's less than, it's now going to become greater than. And then negative 9 divided by negative 3 would be positive 3. So this rule, it will happen when we divide or when we multiply by a negative number. So we'll see the multiplying when that could possibly happen in a minute. But let's go ahead and graph this answer. So we got this time we got x is greater than 3. So I'm going to have my center number be 3. Again, this is not an or equal to. It doesn't have a line underneath it, so I'm going to keep my circle open. That tells me the 3 is not actually included. And then remember, as long as your variable is on this side, whatever way it's pointing, that's the way you're going to shade. It's greater than 3, but doesn't include 3. Let's look at two more examples. So for number three, you'll notice we have a fraction on the left side. The easiest way to solve this problem is to get rid of the fraction. So there's a really simple trick to get rid of a fraction. This whole thing is divided by two. So if I were to multiply the whole thing by two, it would actually cancel out the twos. But here's the trick. When I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. So that means I also have to multiply this 3x by 2. So let's do that and bring down what we have left. So I have 14 plus 4x is greater than or equal to 3x times 2, which would give me 6x. So you'll notice in this case, we multiplied across the sign but it was with a positive number. We don't need to flip the sign. If it's positive, it's totally fine. It's only when it's negative that it becomes a little tricky. I want to make sure all my variables are on the left and my constants are on the right. I'm gonna go ahead and move this 14 over. So I'm going to subtract it. Right now it's being added. This is plus 14, so I wanna do the opposite. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Let me bring down what I have left. 4x is greater than or equal to, and I can't actually combine 6x and negative 14. Those are not like terms. So that's fine. Just rewrite them. 6x minus 14. Oops, that 4 has an x. So now I want to get my 6x over here. So I'm going to subtract it. So notice it's okay to subtract across the sign. That's fine. It's only when we divide or we multiply that we have to be real careful. So 4x minus 6x is going to give me negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 14. So now my last step to isolate my x is to divide out this negative 2. 
but look what's happening. We're dividing across the sign with a negative number. Just to point out, it doesn't matter that this 14 is negative. That's fine. It's only the number you're dividing with that it matters. So just kind of a side note there. Um, so since I'm dividing by a negative number, that sign is going to flip. So it was a greater than, now it's a less than. And negative 14 divided by negative 2 is positive 7. Now that I'm ready to graph this, I want to make my center number. This is like a number line that I'm creating. So I'm going to put 7 in the center. Here would go 6, um, or actually it would go, yeah, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and above it will be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I don't know if I pointed that out on the other ones, but that is important. This is a number line that we're creating. In this case, you'll notice on the other two examples, I left an open circle because it didn't have a line underneath it. It wasn't an or equal to, but here it does. So we draw a circle and we actually fill the circle in. So that shows me that the seven is included. It could be seven, X could be seven, or it could be less than seven. But remember, as long as your variable's on the left, you go with the way your error is pointing. So in this case, my error is pointing this way. So I'm going to shade this way. So this, just looking at this graph, I see that my X could be seven or it could be less than seven. In this last example that we're gonna look at, I need to do some distributing first. Because remember, my first rule is always get rid of any parentheses that you have. So three times Z is three Z. Three times positive one is positive three. I'm gonna bring down that positive 11. Notice I didn't distribute to the 11, it wasn't included in the parentheses. Is less than or equal to, now I need to do some more distributing. Negative two times Z is negative two Z. Negative two times 13 is negative 26. Now remember my second rule of solving was that I wanna combine anything I possibly can on the same sides. So I see on this one, I've got this three and 11. I need to go ahead and combine that before I start moving things around. So three plus 11 is gonna be positive 14. Is less than or equal to negative two Z minus 26. All right, so I wanna get my Z's all to the left, my constants all to the right. So I wanna do the inverse of what's being done. Add two Z, add two Z. Three Z plus two Z is five Z. Let me bring down what I have left. Plus 14 is less than or equal to negative 26. So now I wanna get my constants to my right side. So what I have left is 5z is less than or equal to negative 26 minus 14. That's gonna be negative 40. Now my last step to get my z alone is to isolate my variable. So I want to divide by five. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Now I know some students look at this and they say, oh, well this is a negative, so I should flip my sign. Remember what I said, it's only the number on the bottom that we're gonna worry about. Only if that was a negative five would we flip the sign. It's positive here, so our sign actually stays the same less than or equal to. So negative 40 divided by five would give me negative eight. So now I'm ready to graph. Negative eight is gonna be my center number. I'm gonna have a closed circle because it does have that or equal to line. So I'll draw a circle and then I'll fill it in. And then as long as your variable's on the left, you go with whichever way it's pointing. So it's pointing this way, just like an arrow. So I'm going to shade everything to the left. So looking at this graph, I see that my um, unknown variable could be negative eight 
or it could be anything less than negative 8. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.